next to Liam to close us out on the Q&A round. A most pressing issue facing farmers is an issue facing so all of us, really, and that is inflation, uh, at least issues that haven't been talked about yet. And inflation is deeply connected to something I know a fair bit about. I'm a renewable energy professional. It's related to energy. And I want to share a fact that is uncomfortable to both the Republican and Democratic parties, one they don't talk about much, which is that if we're to grow our economy at 3% a year, which is what every economist and every politician thinks is a reasonable goal, um, we would use the same amount of energy in the next three decades as we have in the last 10,000 years. And that is impossible, friends. And I'll tell you why that's impossible. One, uh, we have 40 years of oil and gas left at current rates of use. And um, you know, some, some Republicans say, oh, they've been saying that since the 70s. Well, I told you I did my thesis on energy return on investment. It's real this time. There's not going to be more decades. And the Democrats don't like to hear that we can't do it all with renewables, not even close. Harvard professor David Keith said that it would take up to 72% of our land to um, use renewable energy to, to power our economy. So we need to stop and dispel the fairy tale that we live in an economy of never ending growth being a real thing on a planet of finite resources. So if that doesn't wake us up and say we need to expand the conversation away from uh, tax credits and, um, you know, increasing the amount of X, Y, or Z, like, no, we need structural foundational paradigm shifts. And I'm here to talk about that. I want us all together right now to recognize that the two party system is failed and it's broken, and it's corrupt. And I'm told the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. But perhaps a better definition of insanity is the list of unspoken agreements between the Democratic and the Republican parties. Their eagerness to feed the war machine, their obedience to the billionaire owners of this country's political media complex, and their divisive strategy of blaming their failures on the other side every time and continually dehumanizing and making caricatures. My mission is to help us realize we don't need to go along with that insanity. In fact, it is our moral duty to recognize that we need a fundamental restructuring of our economy and our current political system will never deliver that. And we need that restructuring, restructuring if for no other reason than because we are heading towards what I call an energy cliff. And to undertake a task this enormous and scary, we need vastly improved tools for solving collective problems. Something this system built when information traveled at the speed of horseback could never do. So please, brothers and sisters, hear me. We will sending another person loyal to a party agenda be sufficient to the scale of the challenge that I'm talking about. Will changing the players and changing the players and changing the players be the strategy we take until we have careened off that cliff? Or do you know in your heart that we must change the rules of the game? So please hear me, brothers and sisters, we can do better. And it requires that we, the people, take the power and the responsibility that must go along with that power to not just tinker with child tax credits. <laughs> we need to rebirth the democracy, the society, the stories that are holding us together. And in the same breath, we must endeavor with every fiber of our beings to develop the wisdom and the love that ensures we don't destroy ourselves with that power. And that is what I will help us achieve as Vermont's representative in Congress. Thank you.